Hey, good morning. Yes, it is. It is Friday, the 12th of July. I heard you guys, so I'm trying to point that direction in repairs, more repair work, and then like to see more tractor repairs. So the parts hopefully will be in today or Monday for the Kubota. A New Holland rolled into the yard for New Holland. It's hydraulic issues, not sure what, but they want a complete service on it as well while it's here. And the nice thing is, he follows the channel, so let's see what we can find with that. Uh, I thought today we'd try to we'd kind of go over what is probably the biggest thing that customers fail to do. I mean, do your customers fail to do? Stay tuned. <laughs> Alrighty, so if you didn't already know it, my name is Eric, and this is the weekday show, Monday through Friday, available on podcast. Today is Friday, July 12th. You made it to the weekend for you guys who work five days, or, you know. What we find in the shop, what I find in the shop, <laughs> is the biggest failure a customer can do is not follow directions. I mean it. You know, and even I'm guilty of it. You take with a cup cadet weed trimmer, you know, a handheld, you know, and use one for years. And then turn around and, and get a new one, right? Or get a customer that brings in a new one. And I'm doing like the old thing, you know, a couple pumps and put on choke, pull it once, nothing, keep cranking till you hear something, and that's the worst thing you can do to the newer ones, like the newer ones, if you read the directions, it says, all right, pump the primer bulb 10 times instead of two times, pull it five times in a full choke, move it to half choke, pull it another five times until it fires, depressing the throttle at that point and some have the when you put it on choke the throttle the accelerator goes back anyway so you don't have to do that so what i find is each machine each manufacturer is changing their stuff every couple of years just to keep you on your toes But I had two push mowers come in uh, this week. One, they said that they don't know what was going on with it. It's a brand new machine that they bought, you know, this year. So I picked them both up. The one, the whole top was ripped right out where like somebody just started ripping and tearing with muscles and broke the housing for the whole we run the flywheel. I take the flywheel off and get the metal cage to attach everything to it. Which you put the fuel tank on it, you put the rewind on it. But the good one, the brand new one, I, cause I, I now follow directions. It says right on most of them, it says right on it how to do it. So I did exactly what it said. First pull it started. Okay. So I mow with it a little bit, which usually if I can't get it with a zero turn, I don't, I don't use a push mower or a weed eater. So this was something new to me. So I parked it, and then I went out later that day and tried it again to make sure there was no issues, and it started right up. So they're going to look out on that one. The other one, we happened to have a part, sir, where we took the whole top, put it on there. God did that yesterday. But the sad thing is I tried to start it there quick, 
before quitting time yesterday and I didn't want to start. So hopefully, because you couldn't check compression, you couldn't check anything because the rerun was busted. So you had to do all the extra work just to get it to the point of, and now we can check compression. <laughs> I hope we have compression this morning. But a lot of times it's just simply following directions. You know, they don't read. I don't read. Maybe it's happened to you, you know. Of not reading the new directions and the new way of starting things versus the old way, right? And I, I remember this. Some of the old, old ways, it used to be just you had that little squirt can of gas. You just give her a couple shots in the carburetor and she'd fire right up. And when you got done, you smelled like gas, right? <laughs> but for us old farts, we've seen a lot of different changes over the years, right? And I think one of the better things that came about was the auto choke system, like for the push mowers and stuff. You don't have to do anything. But it was usually one of two things, you know, either because the auto choke, when it, you shut the machine off, it comes back, right? It's 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 on a a spring flapper is the best thing to describe it. And on the flywheel you have fins that cool the engine too, right? Well these fins, as they're going around, the faster they go, they pr produce wind that blows that flapper off choke. And when the engine comes to a rest or you shut it off, it comes back to choke, so it's ready for the next time, right? So what ends up happening to that is you either get a bunch of grass built up in there, right? Because what it is basically is a, a flapper, and you've got the wings on your flywheel that are producing air currents inside there to keep the engine cool. But it's also using doing a secondary job, and that is, as the engine starts up, it's producing wind that comes up against that flapper in there that's got a spring. And it actually starts to open it up, which when it does that, it takes it off choke. So one or two things happen. Either you take, and the unit is... It started right up perfect for you, and you've been mowing right along, and you mow quite a bit with the push mower. And you go out to start the next time, and it won't start. So it either gets stuck out there with grass in there so that the, ch the choke won't come back on. Or you get a lot of grass built up underneath there, and it's holding the flapper from opening completely up. So it's kind of on partial choke. So it's flooding itself. And it runs terrible. So I mean, there's goods and bads with everything, right? But in order to fix that problem, and I think I've done a video on it, if not, I should, is simply you have to take the top case off the, the push mower and get down to we can pull all that grass out or if you can get a blowgun up in there but the problem is is you can get a blowgun up into there but there's no place to blow it right you're just going to blow it around in circles i've actually had customers stop and and they bought a new push mower because we don't sell new push mowers they bought a new push mower at lowell's home depot tractor supply where have you and it's got the auto choke system on it and they're like it's on the back of their vehicle or in their car, folded up, and we get it out. And they're like, Eric, where is the choke? I can't find the choke on it. Well, it's because it's got the auto choke. And you try to explain to them about that flapper and the flywheel and a spring mechanism with a center post that it opens and it closes, and it's attached to a piece of metal cable type thing and that operates the choke on the carburetor or we've had guys that will take the cover off the air breather and try to shoot gas into it because you can't find the choke i'm not getting you this has happened you can't make this stuff up so that's 
another area, you know, again, it's not reading directions or the book that came with it would tell you, well, it should tell you anyway about the auto choke. And if you bought it from a regular dealer that's a stocking dealer, they would have showed you that. They would have told you that. So it's another reason to buy local. <laughs> and then here just a little over a week ago, we had a Cub Cadet come in that I actually had bought brand new. And it was a return back track supply. And they didn't know what to do with it. So I just, they I bought it at a discount with being the repair guy. Because they didn't want to put the money into it. So we did. And one of my regular customers spotted it and said, what are you doing with that? I said, well, it's for sale. So I told it to him, I think it was three years ago. And we service that machine for him every year. And I tell you, him and his girlfriend they mow a huge yard they have two zero turns going and so he brought it in for a regular service this spring all fine and dandy and it, every year new blades usually new belts and air filter you know complete greasing all the other stuff and we sent it back to him and two weeks later he gets a hold of me and says, what did you do to my machine? I said, what do you mean what did I do to your machine? He said, yeah. He said, it's not running right. It's smoking like crazy. And and we don't know what to do. So I said, well, hold on. Let me come up and take a look at it. And I brought the trailer with me. And I got on it. Well, before I got on it, I popped the air breather. And looked underneath, and it was all oil film. So I'm thinking, well, float, needle and seat, drain gas into the base, thinned out the base, went by the rings, and, and now you're seeing it there. No. We get it back to the shop, because it did start for me. I got it under the trailer. We get it back to the shop, and first thing I notice is the oil is over full by at least a quart and a half. So I'm thinking... It's got to be it, right? So, we drain some of the oil out, but we notice that the oil is fine. There's nothing wrong with the oil. There's no gas in it, no. So, we took it down to where it needed to be for the correct oil level. And that's how I knew it was a quart and a half over. So, we ended up doing that. And I told Claude, I said, we need to drain the gas. So I know what we, what we got for gas. Well, he started draining the gas, and you could smell an off smell to it. And what had happened was our customer, because he works corrections, and I'm not sure where his girlfriend works, but they're pretty busy people. One of the daughters, I think it was, that because he was working all week nights had offered to come mow the yard I mean, it was fine and dandy up to that point but part way through the lawn she noticed she was getting low on gas so she went back to the garage she grabbed the gas can what she failed to do was there were two different gas cans one red, and that was for gas gas. And the other was blue, which is diesel, for his compact Ford New Holland tractor. And she took that can and filled the machine up with diesel. So what it was trying to do is it was trying to fire on a oil-based and it was flooding itself out, smoking like a, a bastard. You know, I could told him, I said, good thing was it kept the, the punkies and the black flies off her. But that there, again, is operator error. And when I was talking to him, he said what he'd done, and it was his fault, because he had used the blue can to get gas one time. So she knew that he had bought gas in the blue can before, so 
she just assumed and he said once I mentioned diesel in the fuel tank he knew exactly what had happened but see those things are operator error and those things are not reading directions again is you know you gotta put gas in it and I use recommend premium a lot of the newer mowers that are coming out the ethanol gas is fine but the problem is if once it sits it starts drawing moisture and now you got water issues so if you can avoid that and buy premium or pri g that jason recommended that we use now it seems to be working great solve a lot of our headaches so i'm gonna start wrapping this up so i mean let me know if what you've run into that the customers simply just didn't follow directions on and was an easy fix but sometimes it gets you scratching your head so on that note you guys have a great friday and we'll see you here bright and early monday morning and we're going to do more farm tractor videos uh, kind of mix it up a little bit and we'll see where it goes so on that note you guys have a great friday and thanks so much for watching